It's quite a fan favorite matchup coming up next. Cypher versus Avec. Two very good friends going head to head in a matchup I know a lot of people are looking forward to, where this is week number six of the Quake Pro League Stage 2. My name's Ketchup, joined on the desk by ZSX. And as I just said, I think this is a matchup a lot of people are excited for. Yeah. Um, but all of that aside, we have got the extra element of leaderboard placing, where Cypher is essentially, you know, he was late to the party. He mm -hmm. was a player that dominated his way into. Uh, the stage one finals. Granted, I think one of his closest matches of the day was against Garpy in the relegation. And yep. It's a crazy timeline that if one of those maps didn't go Cypher's way and Garpy beat him, none of this would have happened, mm. you know? Um, but that said, Cypher is a season behind, yet he's actually been able to surpass Avec already, which means that if he gets a win versus Avec today, it's a great situation for him and kind of maintaining to be quite a scary position for Avec to be in. Absolutely. And I think the one thing for me about Cypher is, for whatever reason, he isn't the mystical, unbeatable Cypher that he was a number of years ago now. Like He is incredibly skilled, perhaps the most skilled Quake player ever. But it, he doesn't seem as terrifying to me in, in Quake Champions the entire time. Yes, he has these games where he just absolutely demolishes opponents, but then he goes away and sometimes he might just, he might get 3 0 by someone you expect him to beat. And that for me gives Av should give Avex some confidence going into this. They will know each other very well. Uh, and we've seen in the past Avex playstyle can frustrate Cypher. He isn't always the best when people are super aggressive, particularly if they can back it up with the aim. Um, and so, yeah, we'll see what Cypher turns up today. And there's the element of pressure. Um, you know, I, I kind of keep going back to the fact that we're in week number six and now we are in a position where, although it matters every single week, now we're in the later stages, you can start doing the maths on the fly and see kind of who's in trouble and who's not. Yeah. And Avec, you know, he's going to be more aware than anyone that if this is another week where Cypher just has one of his crazy sequences and he secures a 3-0 today, Avec kind of maintains a lower position than he definitely wants to be in. Yeah, but at the end of the day, if there's any two players that you would say wouldn't give a damn about pressure, it should be Cypher and Abbey. You know, they, they've been there, they've done that on virtually any sing single tournament they've been at. So, But you're right, like if it goes 3-0, then Abbey, he drops down towards that effortless dramas level, and that's when it becomes a scrap for relegation. And that, Abbey going down to a, a challenge or whatever it is, you know, you would never want to see that. Oh yeah, absolutely. And it's, you know, if anything, it's just an opportunity to see uh, two very, very close friends playing a game that they're both super talented at. And how can you go wrong with that in some ways? Yeah. Uh, I think that's why it's it's a matchup that people are excited for. Because it's two household names uh, playing a matchup where it could potentially be quite unpredictable. We have Avex go over just now. You know, we, we talk about him in droves all the time. Uh, and he, he is just, I think there's just a lot of charisma coming off this guy. And that's something you don't necessarily see as much, excuse me, uh, you don't see it as much from this side of the world. I know a lot of the players, um, they do a lot of their talking in the game and they carry a lot of their attitude in the game as well. And in person, they're quite, you know, close to their chest. Avec is a player that, you know, he's aware that he's a fan favorite, you know, and, and there are moments like that where he just has these crazy breakout performances. And you know, there's a reason he's recognized as one of the best Quake players in the world. You know, I know he, uh, Dreamhack 2018 was a phenomenal tournament for Avec. That was definitely, I think, his biggest tournament result in Quake Champions so far. Mm -hmm. That was before the days of Quake Pro League, of course. But the point is, he's been able to place kind of almost at the top of the pyramid at a major Quake Champions event. And that's why it's impossible to count him out. Always. And he's a champion. And he's one of the most likable players in the scene. And I think one of his strengths is that he his weapon choice is generally spot on. He, he knows when to take fights and he deals an immense amount of damage. Like he might not have the best aim in the world, it's very strong, but the way he, the way in which he manages fights and manages his opponent and uses the, the right weapon at the right situations means he's always in for a fight and he can be over aggressive sometimes, but when it works, he just absolutely steamrolls and demolishes his opponents. But it is that patented Avec aggression, right? There, there are very few players out there that are able to kind of put their hallmark on a, on such a common game plan that it becomes what you are famous for. Yeah. Uh, and that, that is Avec all over. We have got the map pick so we can find out what to expect. We have got some different maps today. Uh, I know Bruins of Sarnath and Blood Run do rear their heads once more, but this time we see some Corrupted Keep. And that was Avec's pick. Now, this is the kind of map you can look at and go, okay, well, hang on a minute. This is a kind of map that Avec has a chance for. And if he's behind in any capacity, he needs at least 
one map win just to get some points to move on. You know, no one when they're lower on the leaderboards wants to get 3 0 and Cypher is a player that can demolish almost anyone. He's had some crazy performances in Stage 2 so far. We can see Clutch was removed. I know that Clutch and Cypher aren't exactly the best of friends. <laughs> uh, and the Anarchy was removed for Keep. And then finally, with that blood run at the last minute, a little bit more traditional with the Ison and the Ranger. Yeah, and it uh, it feels that Cypher has adapted somewhat to Avic in this. I think the, the saw lag on Corrupted Keep is a recognition of the way an Avic wants to brawl on that map. So, so uh, Cypher picking the saw lag just to have that slight buffer and saying, if you want to brawl, come at me. Um, the visor on Ruins means that he could play very tactful on that map, but equally, Galena is extremely strong on Sarnath. Might be one of our strongest maps, and you can use those totems to a great effect to real strangle those choke holes in the middle of the map. And lastly, Blood Run. I think Ison's a very interesting pick. I think it's just a, a champion that Cypher likes a lot. Um, plays in a similar way to Galena for me with the, the use of those turrets. Um, but Visor, obviously, we know... Uh, sorry, not Visor. Ranger, we know, great at capitalizing upon those split levels on that map. Uh, and means that could be equally aggressive to, to get on top of the Ison. If you get on top of Ison, then that's, that's when he's weak. Um, so we've got some interesting matchups, and both generally favoring, again, the VQ3 style champions with the, the traditional movement. And like we saw with CNZ, that allows you to take that uh, good positional game, but also pick up the tempo at the right times as well. Now, we talk about how we expect the series to go throughout the course, and we're talking about Avex position, how he needs at least one map to at least get some points uh, to be a little bit more comfortable. But fundamentally, I think we're kind of talking it in this way as Cypher is definitely the favorite to win. You know, I think we're going yeah. into this with Cypher being the favorite because of just how he's recently been playing and you kind of compare his recent reign of terror against Avex, not so strong performance in the Pro League in general. Um, but that said, there is always the potential for Avex that who knows, maybe this is his time to get a win and a victory set of points is going to make a great difference for him. So there's always the potential for Avec to be like, this is his moment to finally ascend, get onto a new form. Beating Cypher would be a phenomenal result for him because Cypher has just been such a, a crazy dangerous player in Pro League yeah. so far. That there's so many stories going on right now that any outcome is an exciting one. I think your analysis is pretty much spot on, right? That... Cypher is probably is definitely the favourite. He's he's come in late and he's already above Avec in the leaderboards. That statistically shows he is objectively playing better Quake, but at the same time, Avec is Avec, and he is he's he is just so terrifying and skillful. Even though he's not on the top of his game, if he finds his game, he will then take maps. And so I I'm probably feeling a two one to to Cypher for sure, but there's no reason why Avec if he doesn't come out here can not take it the other way. Well, we are moments away from finding out. Just a good time to remind everybody, you know, make sure you're following all the social medias for Quake. Make sure you're following Quake on Twitter. Make sure you're sharing out the stream. If you've got any buddies that enjoy watching competitive tournaments for FPS, this is a great time to get involved. You know, this is a matchup of two legendary status players. And if anyone hasn't seen it before, maybe a good time to show them. Share it out on Twitter. Use the hashtag Quake Pro League. Tell us what players you want to win. And, uh, you know, there's plenty more Quake where that came from tonight. This is a crazy matchup, but there's plenty more left throughout the course of the evening. And two legendary casters. I like, I like your. Uh, that, that, that's a matter of opinion there, as I say. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. That's a good idea. I like your pin match, by the way. Oh, thank you. That was that was uh, given to me by. I actually got two actually. Tokyo Punch Out gave me one, uh, and the other one was given to me by a mate who didn't realise I already owned one for Christmas. <laughs> so it's like oh, maybe I'll wear two next time. I'll just put one on each side. But we're loading up the first match now. Cipher. We're going to be watching him with that visor. Holding on to the piercing sight um, until now. He chooses to use it a little bit later, I think. He knows he hasn't quite got the rail spawn side, so if Avec does, exactly. what kind of angles are we looking at? Exactly, and as soon as he realizes where Avec is, he gets out to pick up that weaponry. Um, good play by Cypher, not putting himself in any risk, and that's one of the, uh, the good traits of Cypher. He's exceptional at taking up positions where he deals more damage than the opponent and avoids damage exceptionally well. Going towards that heavy. In and out, actually. Not really punished super heavy so far. Somewhat of a trade. You know, I'll take one, you take one. Good. The stacks are almost dead even now if you just flip them over. A little bit more of the armor for Cypher. No, the good respect coming out from both players as they look to, to kind of tease each other out while they pick up the relevant items and relevant weaponry. Um, not overcommitting, but the, the rail from Avex signaled that he does want to go in. 
Ooh, maybe it's a good time to go in now. He's done some fantastic entry damage, and Cypher kind of forced into that difficult position. Uh, that is, you know, one of the, the worst places, I think, to get caught on this map is just near Teleport, uh, down near Rocket, because it's like fundamentally, where do you go? How do you escape? You know, Visor's not a champion well known for his mobility, and uh, Avec the perfect time to go. Hits another rail, and this is that time to put on that Avec aggression. He's already got the uh, totems just locked and loaded, all three of them down. He has a mega on command, basically, uh, as long as they don't get taken care of. And this actually is going to be quite a challenge for Cypher. Uh, he's one frag down. He's currently playing from behind as well. And now he's having to put a lot of focus on, do I have to look and take out those totems. We cannot allow Avec to be both in full control and have the totem whenever he wants one. Now Cypher, he's behind again. And the totems are still up. Ooh, oh, in fact, one. he goes on one. At least he takes it out. Avec doing himself damage there to take away any semblance of a resurgence from Cypher. Good play by him. Uh, and also taking up good control on that mid-ground, meaning Cypher is just sneaking away. That was and he's literally threading the needle right there, but it sounds like he's hit another totem. And I've got to, I have to admit, actually, unfortunately, we do not have access to game sound, so I couldn't hear whether he got hit by it, but he I, did, saw though, the health. Yeah. I saw the health and that will do. Yeah, he had timing on the, the heavy armor, which is why he made his way down, but good positioning on that totem just behind the wall. Sneaky position. He still has two up, and now he's got all three up. He's done a great job, as we say. And this wasn't even his map pick. Okay, that's another rail coming down. Cypher consistently trying to just get in and out, but he's taken at least one rail most of the time from behind. And there's that immediate entry LG. Gets the good read on when Avex going to poke his head back, but the damage isn't really there because he gets met by a, a rail again. And uh, no. at the very least, he's got the heavy. So we'll see what we can get from this. No, but he's playing really smart, not over committing at all, doing enough damage. Very similar to the way in which we saw CNZ playing earlier, doing enough damage to keep his opponent on the back foot, keeping control of those major items, making sure he has better positioning. And because of that, Scythe is being forced into maybe taking slightly riskier plays and doesn't really know what to do at this point in time. The controls there, they trade the rails. Important at least a little bit to make sure that Avec gets hit by one more rail, there's a position here to maybe Force him back, maybe Cypher can take one of these important items. Uh, there is an attempt to hit a rail there, but as long as the totems just keep their, their three placements, it just gets harder and harder. And Avec keeping that control, and it really does go to show how much difference a Mega on demand can make. Consistently, if you take down one totem at a time, it's not really enough, because all it takes is that you know, third totem to simply get replaced when the cooldown comes down, and then you know you can overstack once more. It, it doesn't make as much of an impactful difference. Cypher needs to really try and get as many as he can, but Avec is putting them in such awkward positions that Cypher, for him to go out of his way to take out some of these totems, he has to really inconvenience himself. But that's some damage on the rocket pushing him away, and just like that, Avec is immediately weak. That would have been an important rail to land. Avec still railable with his current stack, but Cypher very weak too. And you can see the power of positioning by Cypher there. Managed to squirm his way up onto the mid-ground. Avec fortunately missed one rail, but as soon as he did, Cypher was able to hit a great rail and then pressure the choke point so Avec could move into that room and got himself back onto that map. Great chip rails by Cypher there. Looks for another one. Trying to pepper it down. Avec kind of dancing with the devil a little bit here, but now he's found himself in the tricky position where it's hard to escape. Still railable. Needs to get himself some armor, but that might be easier said than done. Mega's gonna spawn right here. Looks like Cypher's in a better position. Can Avec kind of slip his way out? He might have to give up both of these items, and he is actually gonna do it. Much happier sitting on the lead. This has taken over five minutes to keep this 3-0 position, and Avec, happy to play the clock at this stage. Oh, oh Rail! Did, did a great job to stay alive and sneak around, but just didn't have enough time to pick up that light armor. Good rails by Cypher there, hitting three back to back, I think. And now Cypher's position, it's more about just trying Stop to get that information. Keep the stack up heavy. The second you get some of a wind where Avec is, you know, the opportunity to start getting some damage out. And it looks like now Cypher, he knows he's there, but he really does not want to overextend. There is still the matter of totems. And as you can see, all three totems are still there. Cypher hasn't put a lot of focus in taking them out just yet stand on one. Unfortunately, that's going to give his position away. Avec, super aware of where he is. However, because he face-checked one of the totems, he was able to take down a second, and now that crazy overstack is not going to be as prominent. 
He has to ask the question though. I'm sitting around the center of the map and keeping the Mega. Why is that? Surely Avec has to be letting me do this because why? He values the Heavy. Why does he value the Heavy? Why does he have to value the Mega as much when he's got totems on demand? You know, it's mm -hmm. all about the armor. For sure. And Avic taking a good position there to block the choke point. Cypher not pushing in, not being overly aggressive, knowing that four minutes is plenty of time with only a two frag lead. So opting to back off and secure himself the Mega one more time. This now should give him plenty of opportunity to try and push in and potentially deal some damage on the exit for the heavy armor. Cypher does take down the totems once more. I like that a lot. He waited a good one or two seconds knowing roughly when the heavy armor was. He didn't want to get rid of that totem too early because that would have given away his position rather taking the trap. Only when he realized that Avic probably wasn't coming up did he destroy it. So many layers to the totems. You have to decide <laughs> exactly. when a good time is. It's not just, hey, she heals and it damages me. There's just so much. It's the gift that keeps on giving, really. And now there could potentially be a fight here in the middle but Cypher Looks like he hasn't necessarily got a lot of information. They were right next to each other, but I'm not convinced Cypher really knew where Avic was there. Yeah. For me, delaying the mega, uh, sorry, the mega health on the previous pickup was a slight mistake. I felt he could have taken that and tried to pressure the heavy. Now he's given a little bit too much time for Avic to get back on, back on the map. So he needs to back off and play that longer range game again to try and chip down Avic's stack. Um, but the one thing it does show is he has immense amount of uh, respect for Avic and his combat fighting skill. Now Cypher's going to go towards Heavy. Once more, Avec. Not really fussed about making sure he constantly has it. As long as he's got enough stack that he can survive and pepper rails down and keep Cypher a little bit uncomfortable, I think that's going to be a win for him. Good read by both players there. Avec realizing where Cypher wanted to do, backing off and trading items in the reverse. And now he's just playing the patient game. Time's on his side, so he's taking up the strong choke point positions, meaning if Cypher's going to push in, he's going to take a lot of damage. Looks like the Heavy's going to spawn. That's going to be the next objective. Avec actually pushing in just to keep Cypher away. Now Cypher has to decide, well, what do I do next? Pushing down towards Heavy is going to be too risky. Too much of a death sentence, but now a minute and a half to get two frags. He had four and a half minutes <laughs> just not too long ago, and that has been quickly dealt with. Avec's just defensive plays have been too strong. Yep. Now with plenty of time between the major items, this is the time you want to push in because then you can fall back to restock. Use that piercing side, we haven't seen that for a little bit. Great rocket by Avic though, That's that really hurts Cypher. And he's just going to back off, listen to where Cypher goes and take the opposite direction. He's done such a wonderful job of staying alive here. The one minute warning is going to be good. One minute warning. And from this position now Cypher, in a, uh, uh, that, that time he has to make something happen. He's been playing nice and safe and slow beforehand, but yeah, as long as these these rails fail to hit their target, it just becomes so much harder for him. He has to kind of really try and push in here, but the fight's not on his side. He hasn't got the stack. And now, nice. yeah, with the totem coming down at the same time, Avec just played that so perfectly. Cypher pushing in, knowing he has to make something happen, but as long as he's missing those rails, he knows there's too much damage, really, like, uh, for the rest of the fight. This game has been so refreshing and enjoyable to watch because it's been... It's still time, though. Oh, here comes the LG! Hang on a second. 20 seconds to get two frags. If he gets some good spawns, I know this is Ruins of Sarnath, but if he gets two good spawns, no, maybe, uh, it's it out. took too long. It's out now, yeah. But no, like I was saying, this game has been so refreshing to watch because it's... It's almost the epitome of how Duel should be played. Like, extremely tactful position has been absolutely impeccable by both players. Uh, when Avec was on the offense, we saw Cypher playing some great defense, taking strong positions and bullying him away. But then when Avec was on the defense, we saw him taking amazingly uh, hard to press positions on the choke points, understanding Cypher's, Cypher's aggressiveness uh, and working around that. Um, it was just such a good game of cat and mouse to watch. Yeah, for sure. And then we look at the fact that it ultimately it went in the favor of Avic, which is a great start for him. We're now going to be going on to Corrupted Keep, which was his map pick. Uh, there's, you, know, you can only assume that Avic's going into the next match very comfortable and probably full of confidence. Yeah, I think that Cypher probably gave a little bit too much respect in the mid game there to, to Avic. There was, a, like I said before, there was a couple of times where he might have put a, a bit, uh, a bit more pressure on and tried to play tactful. Um, nevertheless, like Avic 
should be full of confidence because he was able to bully Cypher off of items and make sure that when Cypher pressed, he was showcasing his uh, memorable opening rockets that he was well known for back in Quake Live. So um, it looked like the Avac of old and it was a, a real classical duel. But now we're going into something that's not so classical, Corrupted Keep. A map where you know there is no rail, and it is going to be—it's uh, kind of almost famously known now for just being one of the most in-your-face maps yep. in the entire game. You know, since day one of Corrupted Keep's existence, it's been a map that has just been a you know a complete like slobber knocker of a map. It can be a bloodbath, but it's also—I think it's definitely more tactful than people realise. There's so many angles for spam and positioning you can take, particularly around that the, the major items, obviously, so that where you can. Even if you have control, it's extremely dangerous to take either one if you don't know where your opponent is. And so these two players will obviously know how to play it to perfection. And so we're sure into a treat. Yeah, and as the map has progressed, we, we've seen more emphasis on things like the Super Shotgun. It's, it's one of, I think, the biggest maps you'll see that used. Uh, sometimes you know, you'll see players like Base, you know, kind of famously known for using the SSG when he knows he's against one of the larger champions. Yep. Uh, he's really not shy of using the Super Shotgun as one of his main tools, right? Um, but at the same time, yeah, this is a map that almost... you 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 know aggressiveness more than most maps. And it's not just because of the size, it's just how the map works. Removing the rail makes quite a big difference. But at the same time, the rail wasn't really something that was paying much dividends for Cypher in the first place. So on Ruins, his rail was missing enough on the entry that it was making the rest of the fight very difficult for him, especially yeah. near the end. So the, the way in which Avic was playing is he was completely cutting out any option for Cypher to, be, to, do, to use the rail whatsoever. He was positioning himself in choke points on corners so that if Cypher wanted to do any damage, he had to come in close, and that was where Avic wanted him to come. Um, and so it was just more of the good positioning from Avic making any potential rail shots hard. But now we're loading in Cypher. A lot more chunky champions to work with. Is it going to be Sorlag immediately? Avec with the damage, the BJ and the dual wield. We're going to get some damage done, but it's great to think just like that. This is one map away from Avec securing a 2 0 on Cypher, which would be a really important win for him. Not just the fact that, hang on, he actually does what? manage to get a frag. He didn't even use the dual wield, which is massive because now he has full map control and the dual wield, which now he pops immediately. Asking you shall receive. Yep. In a sec. <laughs> he could also get onto the spawn if he is quick enough, which he is. And he gets a whole bunch of entry LG. So he's going to be quite confident taking this fight, even with the tick damage over time. Swapped the rocket just to be a little bit safer. And there's plenty of time between the major items. Avec also has time to pick up. Oh, Cypher though. I think reading the fact that Avic was being potentially too greedy. Oh, the Cypher. SSG! Again, it's just, I, mean, I said it before, the map even loaded in that the Super Shotgun is such a dangerous tool on this map, especially when you take in the larger champions, which are a lot more vulnerable to that spread. This should be a fight for Cypher, and he is going to take it, and that rocket's yep. going to look real good so far. And that's the, the one benefit, and probably the reason why Cypher picked Sorlag, is having that stack, all you need is essentially a weapon off the spawn, and you're already on comparable shape to a BJ that isn't fully loaded, so... Using that awareness to good effect. However, the rockets come down. Looks like the dual wield's been popped again, and Cypher's quite weak. Avex now chasing it down. Okay, so, so far, Cypher. Bit of a tricky position. There's no armor here. Yeah, he's, he's looking to get out almost immediately. You don't want to get caught down near jump pad. Uh, with no armor, and there's someone with a rocket launcher just waiting. Cypher wants more. Oh, I mean, no. You respect the attempt. You know, he probably thinks if I can get out unscathed here, maybe it's his only chance to get away. Didn't quite work out. But he has now both major items and the dual will back up, and Cypher has nothing except weapons to work with. Oh, here we go, the meltdown. Point blank rocket. Gonna unintentionally rocket jump Cypher into the air, which is just you set him up, knock him down with the dual wield LG. Christmas coming early for BJ right here. And it's gonna be six for one. Avic should drop again, spawning near the nail gun, absolutely melting the health away. Yep, a little bit aggressive there from both players, but Cypher with that large starting stack and even with that nail gun it is definitely enough damage in close range. And now he's trying to 
put on that point of escape, but I like actually having top position. He doesn't want to stick around in nail gun room for too long. We're just going to get in and out. And here comes the dual super shotgun, likely to drop again, and he will. The fire rate of the SSG is just looking too strong for a champion of that size. But there's the re-entry. You know, you mentioned the starting stack, and he doesn't miss the SSG, so he falls again. Potential there for Avec to maybe drop. You know, Cypher was able to get near that mega location, and again, he spawned nice and close to it, so he probably felt confident. But at this point, two to eight. This is quite the significant lead so far. This is Corrupted Keep. Anything can happen and never count someone out. But this is just looking nice and momentum heavy for Avex so far. Yeah, Avex doing an amazing job of catching Cypher off guard. Um, and just doing enough damage that when Cypher wants to take these fights, he's really low every single time. Yes, Cypher has got a couple of frags off the back of spawns, but when it's been an open play, Avex had complete control and really been manipulating Cypher to great effect. You have to look at the difference here. Two to nine and only four minutes on the clock. This has been quite a bloodbath and a half. You have to ask what Cypher going to do to try and get back up on this. That immediate rocket is looking pretty good, but that's going to be 100 for Avex, a direct and it's immediately put Cypher back into that uncomfortable position. Oh, no. And no trade to be had. Perhaps swapping to the uh, another weapon would have been more beneficial there. 100%. It was a little bit greedy, and the first rocket didn't do anywhere near enough damage. However, what I've liked about Avex play as well, until now, is that he hasn't been too hastily using the, uh, the dual wield, meaning that he's always got it to fall back on. He's only using it if he really, really has to. So if there's an easy frag to be had, or if it's not going to get... A, if it's not necessary, he's not using it meaning Cypher has to be slightly wary whenever he's pushing in. Cypher knows this should be a done deal. And just like that, four to nine. Now, this is Corrupted Keep. On most maps, you look at a difference that large, and you can be like, uh oh, is this going to be a little bit of a wash? But on Corrupted Keep, all it takes is one good snowball effect, and you can make a comeback. Oh, he missed the heavy, though. Oh, the punishment, too. That's a bit disastrous. It is. The, the small bit of lightning gun was just enough. He should still be dead. And the midair is good. Cypher knows it's going to be a midair. Doesn't even need to look at him anymore. That's some confidence. He's going so fast. Fresh off the spawn, Avec. He has got the super shotgun, but the acid spit. Way too real of damage. Now, Cypher has got to take his foot off the gas a little bit. He can't be crazy aggressive with only 48 HP. No, but that was the first time in the map where we saw Cypher with any semblance of control. And you can see how quickly he changed together the frags. So five minutes to go. A lot to play for. Absolutely. I do love this element that you can never count someone out on Corrupted Keep. It literally is not over until it's over. Seven frags to nine so far. Cypher only needs two to even the odds. It looks like so far with the Mega and the Heavy, there's actually quite a significant delay in between them on a map this small, especially when you factor in the movement of someone like Sorlag. Cypher's actually sat on this Heavy for 15 seconds. Uh, yeah. I do wonder if maybe he lost timing on it a little bit. Oh, he definitely did. But 15 at the end, seconds. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, all he needs is that heavy armor to start picking up the pace again. Um, he needs to try and bait out that dual wield and potentially not take it on. But even still, with the stack advantage, he can probably outgun even with the dual wield up. Not looking as likely now. Only 12 damage on that rocket. That, and yeah, yeah. Like just punishing him. That is when timing comes into play. Like he was 10 seconds too early. Like you just can't do that. There's absolutely no chance you can do that. Dual world gets popped. Avec running in with the heavy. Yeah, Avec uses his insurance policy. I think. Avec learning his lesson from the previous couple of frags where he's been almost caught by surprise by Cipher off the spawn, not expecting him to move in with no real weapon, real stack, and so just doing it to secure map control now. Slow down the pace. That's all Avec wants to do. Looks like Cypher's trying to chase it down. And you Avec can, with way more stack. Yeah, you can see Avec just kind of as quick as he can trying to get into stronger positions. He doesn't want to just one-on-one -on -one fight Cypher. He wants to get that advantage. And he, he doesn't need to play risky. So he's always going to just try and maintain positional advantage and make Cypher make a mistake. But so far with Avec looking at a pretty larger stack. He gets some unreturned damage that might be swiftly returned though. That's the health bubble just to try and stop some of the bleeding, even though he steps back foot in the acid spit. Doesn't really matter too much. Yep. And now Cypher had a wonderful you know, spree of frags for quite a while. That is starting to escape him a little bit as now. Just over two minutes left on the clock. Avec, fundamentally, he's kept the lead. And, and that's all there is to it. And you can see there, he that would have been a perfect opportunity where most players might have popped the dual wheel, but Avic holding onto it. The patience was great, meaning for this next fight, it's available. 
And so even though he doesn't have as big of a stack, he has that ability in his back pocket if he needs it. And now the timing on the Mega. We'll see if Avec can survive long enough. You mentioned how he saved the dual wheel. That should at least allow him to be in a good position for this Mega. Cypher trying to wait until the time oh, is right. No. Can he get forced away? The timing! Jeez, Jeez. he was yeah. like three health away from dying. I mean, the, the play of deliberately waiting until, you know, right, I'll take a fight first and then take the Mega when I need it. That was one cell of Lightning Gun away from not working. Yeah, uh, that was the right play by Avic. Great opening rocket. Cypher got a little bit lucky just to sneak on, but... Three frags in it. A minute and a half to go. Avic is really early, but dealing so much damage from below. And if Cypher wants to take this Mega, yeah, Avic, I totally love that, that, that play of just going in. You know, if we're expecting Cypher to go near Mega and maybe try and take it last minute, he's got to sit in an area where the LG is going to delete him because you can't run away. Now the dual wheel being popped, that's going to hurt a lot. Full speed now, looking to try and chase this. One minute left for four frags. This, by all accounts, SX, should be a 2-0 for Avic. And what a result this will be for him if he can take this map. Yeah, huge. Um, Avic's been able to wow. do so much damage from his positions. It's been incredible. Like when they've taken that high, uh, the fight around the Mega, virtually every single time somehow Avec comes up on top with almost double the damage to Cypher. I'd be really interested to see the damage stats at the end. And now Avec not interested in fighting anymore. <laughs> no, this is just play the distance game now. Try and pick up the items. Wow, what a what a result! I mean, by all accounts, this, this should be a win now. Avec taking it 2-0 versus Cypher, and Cypher's able to magically slow down the sands of time. I think this <laughs> one's a done deal. Yeah, I'm, I'm hugely impressed. I love to, as I said at the start, I love to watch Avec. I didn't expect him to 2-0 to Cypher, but I definitely expected him to put up a good fight and take a map at least. So, yeah, it's been really good. And Cypher tried to use Sorlag's speed and stack to bully Avec. You win. And Avec just matched him. Well done for Avec. That's now going to be, at the very least, a 2-0. But come on, this is Quake Pro League. We're not finished yet. We still have one more yeah, map to get look through. At, look at the damage difference. Avec with like almost 20% more than Cypher. Um, oh my. It's... And also look at the control too. Yeah. Uh, the item pickups, you know, particularly around that heavy. Uh, the one time Cypher was able to control heavy was where that spree of frags came from. But Avec spent most of the map just making sure that didn't happen. You yeah. know, and it was just down to the damage in fights alone that just you, you almost feel like some of those fights would just make Cypher be like, huh, what? Like, but look, it, look at this oh. positioning. Like there, there is no way he should be doing as much damage as he could. Cypher hit virtually nothing there. Um, the it's use normally of the, the mirror effect. Exactly <laughs> it's right. Normally the other way around. Like. The use of the dual wield was really great. Used it in the in the perfect situations. Um, dealed some amazing damage, and just respected what Cipher was bringing to the table, but made sure he wasn't shying away from combat. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, for sure. But you just look at so many of these replays, and it looked like it was Avex map the entire time. There was that one moment where Cipher, you know, he got that one frag at last, and then yeah. it was just a spree. And in a couple of minutes, he's able to be two frags away from exactly. tying things up. You know, by five minutes, I think it was seven to nine. That is a crazy, crazy scoreboard for only half the map playing out. But I would have expected nothing less from these two players in general. It's just Avec. It's like you said, this 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 looks like a different level of play. I and mean, there is the element that maybe they've played together for so many years, yeah. so many times that there is this extra layer of comfort for Avec. And this is, if there are people in stage two he can beat, maybe Cypher is one of them. Like all skill and legacy aside, when you play against someone so much and you become so finely tuned for how they approach the game, you almost ignore results both ways. This is truly a player versus player matchup without any other you know, pieces of prior information. If you were going by previous information, Avec would have been a favorite to get 3 0 by Cypher. Exactly. But uh, no, you're right. And it's the fact that they have played together a lot comes into it. But the way Avec has played is he's been smart. He's shown great mechanical skill. Uh, and I've really enjoyed his positioning. The fact that you can look how aggressive he is, but how careful he is in his aggression, the way he dodges his positioning in fight, is it's not outright aggression. It's it's managed aggression. One could say Avec aggression. There you go. But it's just put into perfect practice. And it's a fantastic result for the Prince, man. Managing to just get at least a 2-0 versus Cypher. This is just the second map. But he's know, got we, to be a favorite for, for 3-0, the way he's been playing like the, the, the diff like 
Yeah, the decision making, the mechanical skill, he's just outshone Cypher in both maps so far. So I'm we have to go back in for a 3 0 now. Which is kind of rare to see. Normally, Cypher is the kind of player that has been doing that to other people in stage two. You know, this this has been his kind of breakout performance and his breakout year. I say year because technically, I think Pro League really kind of started around the QuakeCon time, and sure. that is that year long program, right? So, yeah, now we're going into the third and final map. If Avic gets a 3 0, this is one hell of a return. Mm -hmm. you know, we've had that break away. There's been, it's been almost two months, I think, since before the holiday season to now, and we're back uh, for week number six. There were players out there that, you know, they're coming back and maybe there are players that are refreshed and they're ready to play in a way that we didn't see before. Avec just kind of looks like he's just returned to form and it's like, hey, guys, I'm back. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm sick again. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it's considering where... Uh, it's so up and down, but it's... I hope I hope he can keep up that level of uh, that level of skill. He can't breathe easy just play. yet. Fundamentally, the problem with Avec is that he is low down on the leaderboards. He kind of needs a 3-0, and that's the thing. He's got a win versus Cipher today, yeah, sure, but that win needs to mean more than a 2-1. Uh, you have to get the biggest point injection you can possibly get, and we're going to be slowing things down some as we go on to Blood Run. But he's not going to be slow so far. Looks like Avec pushing forward but taking a lot of rocket damage in the process. Yeah, and I expect this map to play out in a relatively similar sense to as we saw Ruins in the first game. Uh, good positional play, use of the rail, strong defensive positioning. Um, particularly the fact that Cypher is playing Eisen and so has virtually no maneuverability. Um, very similar way to which Avec played Galena. So he's going to have to rely on his positioning a lot. And now he's got the rail, he can, he can play that range game as well. Be watching Cypher just now, trying to get some of that initial information as we now have the next rotation of the items. Heavy's going to be first, and there's the immediate rocket jump. That was just check out some of that rocket spam just to try and deny. Avec looks like maybe oh, he no. gets in and out safely, but the mid air that teleport almost looked like it was a death sentence, but manages to hit the magic rocket at the perfect time. Yeah, absolutely. I think forgetting how impactful that uh, r that Ranger passive can be sometimes. Yeah, why does Ranger have to care about blowing himself up? But now it's actually instantly flipped things up. So now he has given up oh. the heavy, but he's got some wonderful damage to make it way less impactful. And now Avec, Mega's in play, but the tri ball has moly. just that has destroyed. Avex health and it's forced away now. Cypher able to get the mega happily. But wait a minute, these rockets, those rockets are fantastic, but the stack just wasn't there. Oh, why did he orb? He could have hit another rocket, I thought, but it still wouldn't have been enough. Amazing opening rockets from Avex, but good push by Cypher as well. Has been at least enough time taken away. Safely able to go in. Nice little rail, actually, close range. He knows the jump pad is there and Ranger. Unless he's got the orb, he's not really a champion that can change his jump arc. So if he's hit that jump pad and you're confident, you can probably set up those free shots. Now Cypher's set on a more stack. Looking to establish the center of the room, the classic. Now if you're on blood run and you've got control, you own the center of the map. Now Avec forced into the scary position. How can he escape? Setting up the rail angle. Avec knows he's looking for the angle and he hits <laughs> it. Cheeky by Avec, but he would have killed Cypher to be fair if he hit a direct. Ooh, Big if. Turret, hello. D did he? That was the turret saying, I found it, boss. Yeah, I'm not sure how Cypher misread that. I thought it was pretty obvious where Cy uh, Avec went. Somehow manages to escape with his life, off the spawn anyway. Retreating around, he's probably found a couple of weapons. Should maybe have the rail about now, jumping down towards the middle. We'll see if what he's got access to, but so far now, Cypher's just happy to keep control. It is going back to that classic of Blood Run, right? You know, if, if you have the control on Blood Run, you, you pretty much you dominate this side. It, it's too tricky for opponents. They can't really strong arm their way in. But actually teleports oh. towards the Dire Orb at the last second. I feel like he delayed that teleport as much as he possibly could. I like the play from Cypher. He used the turret as a distraction, meaning Avic had to aim for the turret and not the choke point. So Cypher could push him while Avec had to change his focus. Um, but it was, yeah, just a crazy fight by Avic to come away with a frag. Oh, he does get some of that initial damage, but again, Ranger and that passive, less self-damage means that, you know, those common situations, oh, that's such a good rail. And he misses the Mega by half a second, if that. 
That's uh, quite a punishing mistime right there. And Avec, you know, you're so used on Blood Run seeing players. They take minimal damage getting in towards the heavy, but the player is, you know, on the other end is simply just waiting to juggle you with the LG. Ranger just doesn't have to care. If he gets that really quick, crisp rocket jump, it does like barely any damage to him, and he's straight out of there. It's a wonderful champion on this map. Nice use of the orb to take positioning. Wow, that's some nail damage. Certainly didn't tickle. And now Avec, it's done enough damage that he's a little bit nervous over what yeah. he should do. Is he listening out for the Mega now? Here's the Mega gets taken, but he knows it's not over yet. By all means, Cypher could have pushed forward. Good play by Avec. Just not worth the risk at this stage in the game. Blood on oh, Blood Run, there's just there's no there's no reason to give away easy frags when it's so so easy relatively to defend yourself. Especially in a power up room, you know, the light armor's in here. All he has to do is get back up to a regular stack, and he can start playing the Blood Run game. He's got the orb if he needs mobility, or, you know, dare I say, if there's a fight that goes well. Nice little unreturn, and he doubles back! Nice! Avic with the play! Cypher was not ready, but the damage wasn't real, unfortunately. Cypher with the turnaround. That, by all accounts, could have been Avex's play. It was the right read to make to get the free damage, just couldn't finish it. Yeah, completely caught Cypher off guard. Not enough damage, and slightly missed out on the Mega. Ooh, these rails looking good. Scary stuff for Cypher. Very scary. Actually, yeah. That one missed rail saves his skin. Problem is, still no armor. Even if he collects a light armor here, he's got to be really careful. Looks like he should be at least free to go in and take that mega. A three to three. As long as Cypher lacks the armor, he's got to worry about rails from all over the place. Yeah, good, good. Back-to-back -back rails. Maybe could have swapped the machine gun and hopefully tickled him down, but it was worth the risk. I can't think Cypher's thinking. When is this light armor going to spawn? Another great rail by Avec. Cypher's completely off the map now. Quite brave to actually keep that angle. I know it's, yeah. it's a tricky shot for Avec in general, but it just shows the confidence, I think, that he knows. This is an awkward angle. I'm not confident he's going to hit the shot, and I need this rail. You know, you're prepared to take that risk to keep Avec as, as far behind as you can. But right now, another rail comes through, misses the shot, and sets himself up for the tri-bolt to connect fully thanks to the door frame. A lot more punishing of a, of a rail than one would think there. Yeah, hitting these occasional rails is doing just enough to set Avec back, but good dire orb. I think that was through the grates from the upper ground. Now Avec looking to re-establish. Great rail on the jump down. Looking for another shot, but sticking for the rail. Now it's a bit too risky when Eisen's running full speed ahead with rockets wow. in sight. And he pushes his way happily, making it a 4-4. Much closer than things have been. Once again, you're seeing Cypher's <gasps> use of the turret. How has he done so much damage? Bloody hell. Oh, my word. Yeah, Cypher's use of the turret in the original fight as a distraction did just enough to make sure Avic didn't do enough damage, but that super shotgun was just unexpected. Now he's going towards Mega, but at the same time, let's optimize that time a little bit. We need an LG. If we have three seconds until Mega, that's enough time to run in and out. Cypher trying to spring the attack, but his own plasma really didn't do enough. And actually, yet to hit a single one. To the point where now, I think fighting for this heavy is too too risky. No choice but to concede it. Keeping Avec even nice. more in control. And these rails from Avec have been so good all night. Yeah, weapon choice. And aim has been on point, Avic, for every single map so far. The fact that he entered with the lightning gun, followed up with the rail, meant he did twice as much damage as if he entered with the rail, potentially going to miss that hard shot. So always making sure he gets the cheap, easy damage whenever he can. And two frags now, two minutes to go. It's a big ask for Cypher, particularly when Cypher, um, when Avic has full control and timing. And the fact we're on Blood Run. Exactly. One of the extra elements is that Avec, he's, he's in full control. Oh, he's so by early. By all accounts, he's in the lead. But yeah, he's uh, giving up a lot of damage, and now he has to give up the Mega. He's going to get timing now, I think, but with just over a minute and a half of the clock, timing's only going to help you so much at this point when you're conceding frag after frag, and this looks like it could very well be a 3-0 for Avec. What a crazy result this would be for him. I think, yeah, Cypher's timing has been a little bit off, and... I think all the maps today, he was a good 10 seconds early for that and stuck in the choke point. He took too much damage. Doesn't even matter that he's missing these rails. That rail doesn't even need to miss at this point. He's no, just got I'd be surprised if he even went for this, to be honest. He just wants to maintain positioning. Initial rocket damage. 
Nosey gets taken, timed it perfectly. Now we're going to try and just run away as much as we can. Use the teleporter to our advantage. Diorbs in play. Exactly. And at this stage of the game, positioning is far more important than taking items. You can take them if they're free, like he will now, just to get it away from Cypher. Yep. He's dead, yeah, but he took away the heavy. But so there is, Cypher hasn't got as there, much avenue. There is time to go. I think he might have heard him there. He just needs a good... He needs a good spawn. Avec did use the Dire Orb to deny the heavy. There is that one saving grace, but he has to find him. Oh, he oh, saw, saw him. him, but he'd already dedicated to the jump. He's going to waste about three seconds doing that, at least. 30 seconds on the clock to get two more frags. Keeping the control, but now Avec's going to play the runaway game. He's going to do the blood run. There's still time if he gets a frag. You can have a... Oh, that rocket. That is that rocket crucial. Waste, that rocket wasted three seconds yeah. by itself. I mean, that rocket's won in the game. I mean, the game was probably won already, but that rocket solidified his win. Perfect position. He's going to get the kill. Now, if he gets a spawn right now, but where is he? Where is he? He's spawned. He's delaying it. Uh, and that's it. Wow. There was, a, there was a chance there, a potential chance at the last second. He but tried Havik to force it. Played so incredibly well all the way through. Final map, six frags to seven. And just like that, Avic secures a crucial 3-0 versus one of the most dangerous players in the world right now. Yeah, and that map was as even as the map goes. I think there were there was about five damage between them. There was only one item between them, like six, seven. That was a great game. That was two players that play against each other and are good friends duking it out. That's exactly what I think a lot of people expected map-wise, but I don't think people expected the result. That's the Freezer. one thing oh. that was a complete curveball. Avec getting the series win is one thing, but a 3-0 is the least expected thing. And yeah. off the first frag, Avec, he was just dead to rights there, but he just, oh, that's fine. I've just got to hit this miracle mid-air. Let me just quickly do that real quick. That's why Avec is a legend, and that's why he has always been considered one of the greatest Quake players. He may have had a not-so-successful pro league so far, but with results like that, this is why Avec can and never will be counted out. No, and then it kind of played out as we said at the start, right? That there's absolutely no reason why... That was a great mid-air. Uh, there's absolutely no reason why Avec, <laughs> Avec can't win this series. Um, and it's if Avec turns out to play, he can beat anyone. That's exactly what we said. And he won it 3-0. Unexpected, yes, but... I mean, it's, it shouldn't be. It's still Avec. He's still one of the best players, again, that's ever been in Quake. So... Yeah, it's, uh, as we said, if he can keep this up, it's just great for the Pro League in general. Avec, it was second place DreamHack win to 2018. Uh, that is his biggest result he's had so far in Quake Champions. Grand finals of one of the largest lands Quake Champions has ever seen with all of the best players in the world in attendance. Like, I mean, he's known for his land performances. For so sure. the fact that he's transitioning that into an online capacity is spot on for and even Avec's uh, nightmare journey for the stage one finals I know he had a bit of difficulty actually getting into Italy so that yeah, was that's uh, not unusual though but no but, so, but it's just it's just the fact of the matter is it's dedication uh, and it's the fact that this is a player that will literally go through hell and back to play at the highest level yeah and uh, he's just had himself an absolutely fantastic result today and I kind of feel like knowing Cypher I kind of feel like he ended that series with a smile on his face like the fact that they know Avec I know he's probably not going to be happy to get 3 0 but uh. considering they're bros <laughs> no considering they're bros I'm surely sorry. that must have been I oh think, you've got me bro come on I think uh, it's I don't think anyone who's competitive would ever want to lose. If he was going to lose to anyone, it, he would probably choose Avec. Doesn't mean he ended with a smile on his face. <laughs> when I say no, when I say smile on his face, I mean uh, you got me. All right, all right, fine. all right. I mean a smirk more than a smile. I don't mean he lost. <laughs> yeah, like no one does that. Yeah, yeah. I'm saying that there was definitely, I think, fine. an air of respect from the end. Yeah, you have yeah. to respect. I agree. It. But I believe that's going to be yeah our third series done for the night. We have our next one up next. A really exciting one actually. Dewey.